Hi, I'm Steve Jaynes, and welcome back to this audio class on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 371, How to Keep Your Mind on God's Word. We will learn keys and principles on how to keep our minds on God and His Word. Luke chapter 8, and we're going to start in verse 26. And it says, And they arrived at the country of the Galilees, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, this is talking about Jesus Christ, and they come across in the boat, and they just get to the other side, and as they come to land, and there's Jesus. And when he went forth to land, this is talking about Jesus, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils a long time, and wore no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him with a loud voice, said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, turn met me not. Wow. You know, when you see a man like this, you can see immediately that he's not normal. Because, does anyone else here live in tombs? You don't do that? Okay. He just did not live a normal lifestyle. And you'll see more about this. You can see immediately that. And this man with the devils went to Jesus, but he went to Jesus not to be delivered. He went there to yell at him. (laughs) And we'll go to verse 29. For he had commanded the unclean spirits to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept in bound in chains and in feathers and he break the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness so you can tell he's not very normal a normal person doesn't do that he doesn't have chains on him and he just broke the chains right off him and Jesus answered him and saying what is thy name and he said legion because many devils were entered into him so this is a man loaded with devil spirit and Jesus was commanding the devil spirits to come out he was doing that with his word he was telling them to come out and they besought him that he would not command them to go into the deep or to the abyss to nowhere and there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter them to enter into them and he suffered them then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine wow and heard and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked Ooh, terrible and when they that fed them saw what was done they fled and they went and they told it in the city of the country and when they went out to see what was done They came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Pretty wild. But what you see here, one way to keep your mind on God is to tell others what great deliverance God has done for you. This man who was naked at one time he was now fully dressed and in his right mind sitting at the feet of Jesus and Jesus was teaching him God's word teaching him how to keep his mind from being affected again by devil spirit to keep that from happening to him again and when the people that took care of those pigs the swine came back and they saw the man sitting in his right mind they were afraid they've seen this man who was not normal acting not normal most of his life, and now when he's acting normal, that frightened them. Don't know why, but it, it does at times. When people start seeing you act in a normal way, it bothers them. And they also, which saw it, told them by what means he that was possessed with the devils was healed. And the whole multitude of the, of the country of the Galileans round about besought him to depart from them. For they were taken with great fear. 
And he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with Jesus. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus has done for him. And like I was saying, this is a great way to keep your uh, your mind on the deliverance that God has made available is by telling others what God has done for you and what God can do for them if they would like to see deliverance done in their lives. Go to Mark chapter 16 verse 15. So we're looking at keys and how to keep our minds, you know, on God's word. And one is to tell people what God has done for us. And in Mark chapter 16 and 15, Jesus here says unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature or to every one. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. The people who want to believe, these signs shall follow them. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and guess what? They shall recover. This is the lifestyle of the believers today, is that we can we might you know drink something that will not be the best for us some deadly thing i mean that's not the best for you but we will be able it won't hurt you it says here she'll take up serpents well what does that mean to take up serpents well it's talking about being faced with the enemy at times we'll be faced with the enemy someone will try to slow us down and stop us from doing the best that we can for god go to luke chapter 10 The next book, Luke chapter 10. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3. It says, After these things the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two and two before his face unto every city and place whither he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of harvest, that he would send forth laborers unto the harvest. Go your way, behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. See, Jesus says, hey, the, the harvest is out there. There's people who need to hear the good news of God's word. They need to hear the preaching of what Jesus Christ came to make available. The harvest is there. It says, go your way. I send you forth as lambs. Lambs aren't very tough. They're sort of meek amongst wolves. Wolves eat lambs. We'll go to verse 17. So he sent them forth that way. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fallen from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. Jesus Christ said, I've given you power to tread on the serpents. Remember in Mark it says, you shall pick up serpents. Well, and what is the serpents? The serpents is the enemy. Because look at this. It says, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by in any means hurt you. Nothing is going to hurt you. You might come across some enemies. You might come across some serpents, some wolves. You might come across some of these across your path. But nothing shall by in any means hurt you. That's pretty good to know. You can't get hurt believing in God and his word. You can't get hurt. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. When you're born again, you're going to be in heaven and all hell can't stop you. That's a really cool thing. But as we walk around, we're like lambs. 
In other words, we don't hold any bitterness. We're not trying to show people how tough we are. We're trying to let them know that we love them and that we want them to have God's best. And we preach and make known God's word and the deliverance that is available to them. And if they want it, they'll come and ask for it, how they can have it. And then we teach them. And when someone tries to hurt us, well, it can't happen. They might instruct us for a little while, but God will find a way out. We might get a stomach ache or some aches and pains, but God says we lay hands on one another and recover one another. We do that. We keep walking ahead with the greatness of God and His Word. We have power to tread on serpents. The enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us. We must believe and have the conversation and vocabulary of believing. In other words, the opposite of that would be saying, Oh man, i got lots of aches and pains. You know, and you should see my mother, she's almost dead. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, but we, we don't talk that. We talk the talk of, man, isn't God great? Man, I feel great. God is sure working wonderfully in me. You should see what happened to me. This thing happened, I believe God, and man, God came through like crazy. It's the conversation and vocabulary of believing that we must carry with us. We must say that we have all power over the enemy. We must say it. Not just think it, but say it. And nothing shall by any means hurt us. Think positively according to God's word, not negatively. The world is so quick to let you know all the injustices and what's wrong in the world. We don't care anyhow. We're not a part of this world. We got our citizenship now is in heaven. What we do is say, "Well, God, praise God, we're moving. We're on the high road to glory." We 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 speak God's word that can help and bless people. Go to Acts chapter two, in verse forty-one. Acts two forty-one. We've been in Acts before, huh? And when they that gladly received the word, they heard that good news of deliverance. They heard that good news that was available. They gladly received the word, were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued fastly in the apostles' doctrine, and in fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Signs, miracles, and wonders are really part of our lives. They're part of our lives. We read God's Word. We pick up God's Word. We read it. We consider it. We think about it. And we do it. We do the things. See, I believe that it's just part of our lives. It should be as normal as breathing air to believe in miracles. To see the miraculous come about in our lives. The miraculous. Yeah, and verse 44 says, And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions with an S and goods with an S and departed them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking the bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. See, that daily they fellowshiped with each other. They had lunch together. They met with each other. In verse 47, Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church such as should be saved. To keep your mind on God's word, it's important to fellowship with like-minded believers. Believers who love God and His word fellowship with them. It's great to hang out with others who talk about how good God's word is. And praise God like in verse 47 because it adds to each other's lives as we continue to bless one another. So another key to keeping God's word on your mind is to fellowship with like-minded believers. Look at Romans, the next book, Romans chapter 12. We're going to start in verse 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Isn't that wild? See, God wants you to be a living sacrifice, not a dead one. 
a living one. We live for God. And be not conformed to this world and all its negatives, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How do you prove it? By trying it out. God says, prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. You prove God's word. You try it out. When I first manifested God's spirit, I tried it out. I went and said a word. And then another word and another word. I proved it. And then when it came to some of these other manifestations that we've been talking about, I proved it. I tried it out. Mike was with me. We went down and did some of this stuff. But that's what you do. You prove it. Verse 3 says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think more highly than he ought to think, but to think think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And people have taken that verse and they say, Well, don't think too highly of yourself. But that's not really what it's saying. It's saying, Think according to the word which is very highly of yourself. For as we have many members in one body, and all the members have not the same office. See, everyone who is born again of God's Spirit is all part of the same family of God. Jesus Christ is our big brother, and we're all brothers and sisters of the family of God. It's really great. But we all don't do the exact same thing. But we're all members one of another. What I'm going to share here is uh, we do these things all together. It's an all-together club. We need each other to perform God's Word. You can't really perform God's Word by yourself because how can you heal someone else if there's no one else around? We need one another. We need one another to share and talk with each other. That's what it's saying. It says, we have many members in one body and, and all the members have not the same office or the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another. We're all members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophesy, let us prophesy according to the portion of faith or believing. We operate the manifestations of God's Spirit by our portion of believing. How much do you believe? That's how much you operate. Pretty simple, huh? Or ministering, let us wait on ministering. Or he that teaches on teaching. Or he that exhortation on exhortation. He that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. In other words, we just do what we're good at doing. And do it with fun. Wholeheartedly. He that teaches, you know, some people just like to teach. Some like to set up. Some people like to do different things. Some people like to minister healing. Some people like to do different things. That's okay. We can do all nine manifestations. All believers can. But we just do what we, what we like to do. Because why? It is God which is in you, both the will and the do of his good pleasure. Why do some people like to be cooks? Why do some people like to be plumbers? Why do some people like to be something else? Why do some people like to teach God's Word? I believe it's because it's God which was in us, both the will and the do of His good pleasure. We can be good at what we do because it's God within us. It's God within us. It's, just, it's pretty cool, huh? Verse 9 says, Let love be without dissimulation or partiality. We just love. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. If I get to hang out with you guys or I can hang out with a bunch of other guys that aren't believers, I'd rather hang out with the believers. If you guys are having a Super Bowl party, I will, I'll be there. If some other guys are having a Super Bowl party and they, and they don't love God, I'd rather be with the people that love God. You guys are having a cookout, let me know. I'm coming. See, I'd rather, that's what it's saying. It's saying, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Preferring believers. I didn't write it. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. That's patient in tribulation. Continue instant in prayer. In other words, we can pray pretty easily. 
In other words, a prayer is needed. Okay, let's do it. Instant in prayer. You know, we have instant coffee, instant tea. You know, instant in prayer. Need a prayer? Okay, I got it. Distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. You know, we're kind of friendly to people. Invite people in. Have a seat. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one to another. Mind not high things, but consent to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. In other words, look how good I am. No, it's how good God is every time. Really, it's really how good God is. It's never how good we are. We're just people, and we make mistakes, all of us. But God is God. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. As much as you can. Try to be at peace with all men. Because you know what? If you have a fight with you know Mean Joe down the road, look how much time and energy that takes. Just be at peace with Mean Joe down the road. You know what I mean? Just in other words, it doesn't. We don't. We just want to live in peace with everybody as much as possible. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, "Vengeance is mine; I will repay," said the Lord. In other words, you don't ever have a thought. I want to get back at this guy. You just say, "I'll let God take care of it." Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him; if he thirst, give him drink. See, your, your enemy is in need of food. You say, here, here's something to eat. If he thirsts, you say, here, here's something to drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heat coals of fire on his head. That might sound kind of weird, but in the lands and the times of the Bible, in the villages that they lived in, they would have a young man, a young lad, that would get up in the morning, and he'd go to the, the central fire that sort of kept going through the night. He'd take a coal off that fire, and he'd put it on a broken piece of pottery and put it on his head and he would go to each, each home and get their fire going so that fire on his head coals of fire on his head would warm him he would be everyone else would be cold in the morning but the guy delivering the fire he was warm and that's what it's saying he says in doing so you know you're going to heat coals of fire upon your head you're going to be warmed if you give your enemy some food he's going to say why, why are you giving this to me he says well I forgive you. Don't hold any animosity. What? Well, I'm your enemy. Why don't you give me something to drink when I'm... Well, it will warm him. He might even warm up and come to your fellowship. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Remember the old lambs among wolves? We just can be this way. We can be gentle. We do all these things in this chapter with each other. We need each other. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 19 says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making a melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things under God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, we're just blessed. We're singing to ourselves. We're blessed. And it says here, Submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. First of all, we're to be blessed because we're reading God's Word, we're learning God's Word, and we're blessed as we're learning it. And then we help each other, we submit to each other. We teach each other God's Word. I love this. It's a family working together. It's not leader and follower. It's family member and family member. That's God's Word. Family member and family member. Helping each other with God's Word. Someone saying, hey, you know what I saw in God's Word? You go, what? And they show you something. You go, wow, that's cool. I could use that. Each of us submitting each other. What does it say? It says what? Submitting one to another. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Submitting to one another in the fear or respect of God. Go to First Timothy, right after Thessalonians. The First Timothy chapter 4, verse... 11. It says, These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth. You see, Timothy was a young man. And what, what the Word of God is saying, just because you're a young man, don't let anyone despise your, your youth. But be thou an example of the believers in word, 
in conversation. Remember I said we have to have that conversation of believing? Conversation in charity, which is the love of God in the renewed mind and manifestation. In the spirit, in believing, in purity. It says, till I come, give attention to what? Reading. Reading to exhortation and doctrine. You know, until we get together, what we do is we, we pay attention to reading God's word. And to exhortation, that means building one another up. As believers, we should spend a lot of time just building one another up. We do that by conversation, the words we use. And the doctrine is right believing. Neglect not the spirit that is in thee which was given by the prosperity, which by the laying on the hands of the presbytery. Meditate, verse 15, upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profit in me appear unto all. As you meditate on God's word and the things of God, the, you're going to profit, and your profiting is going to appear to all. Take heed unto to thyself and unto the doctrine, unto the right believing. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. See, the first one you have to take care of yourself as you read God's word. See, I'm teaching here a class on how to read the Bible so that you can be built up and understand God's word and to walk with power in your life. And as you do that, you, you're profiting, well, you'll be profited and it will appear unto all. And then you share that with others. And they will get blessed too. It's like I've said many times, you can be very, very blessed and you will bless many others. It's a pretty cool thing, huh? Well, a personal study and reading of the Bible is needed to keep your mind on God's Word. The doctrine is right believing, right vocabulary, right conversation. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. And we'll start in verse 1. It says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace that is Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. See, as you learn God's word, then you can pass it on to others, and then others can pass it on also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that, in, that warth entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must first partake of the fruit. What that means is first you get blessed and then you can help others. And verse 7 says, Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. As someone who's teaching you God's word can teach you God's word, but God's the one that will give you understanding in all things. You can read God's word when you're reading God's word, and God will give you the enlightenment and the understanding of what you need for your life. You've got to always be cognizant and aware that God is within you, both the will and the do of his good pleasure. He's there teaching you. I might be sharing some of God's Word. You might be all alone reading God's Word. God can uh, teach you. God can share. And you know, the thing here says, consider, meditate, think about God's Word, and these things will be part of your life. Pretty cool, huh? Look at verse 22, same chapter. I just want to read a couple things here. It says, Flee also youthful lust, but follow after righteousness, faith or believe in charity peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart but foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do drend a strife you know what a foolish question is a foolish question is like if God is so powerful can he make enough angels to dance on the head of a pen that's a foolish question God wouldn't even bother with it you know what I mean God's too smart to do that Verse 24 says, But the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all, apt to teach, patient, in meekness instructing those 
that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give to them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of what? The devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. As you teach God's word and put God's word on, then you can recover your, yourself by keeping your mind on God's word, and you will be able to help others who are in that situation by sharing God's word, letting them know that deliverance is available. Pretty cool. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. In verse 22 says, Put ye off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. This is talking about the man before you understood God's word, before you got born again. It says, You put off that man and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The battlefield is always in the mind. That's why we have to keep the vocabulary of believing in our minds. We have to speak God's word to one another. We can't let anybody put us down and we don't want to be in the position of putting anyone else down. We always want to speak the truth in love. We renew our minds according to God's word. We put off the old man, the old way of thinking, and we put on the new way of thinking, which is what we've been learning about today in the supernatural realm. And it says in verse 24, That ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You are righteous and you are holy. Therefore put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hand the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, building up. That's what we do. We speak things that build up, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. We are to forgive one another. I've said this at different teachings more than once, but I'm going to say it again. In God's Word, there's a lot of Bible talking about forgiving one another. You know why it's in there so much? We need it. You know why we need it? Because we're people. And people are annoying. We make mistakes. We say things that we shouldn't say. We, we have ways we like to do things and it bothers other people. We're not mean or vicious. We're just annoying. And if you hang out with somebody long enough, you'll figure it out. But you know what? We forgive one another. We're tenderhearted because we, we understand that we're just people. And God's Word says that a lot, that we're to forgive one another. Verse 1 of chapter 5 says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love. As Christ has also loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. That's what we're to do. We're to walk in love with one another. And we can put up with one another because we know what God forgave us for. And once we know what God forgave us for, then we have no problem forgiving anyone else. It's easy to forgive. Because we know what kind of stinkers that we are at times, right? So then we can just say, hey, I forgive you. Let's walk together and beat up the adversary <laughs> as we march towards the return. In the next episode, we will learn about Jesus Christ's return. Then we will be comforted by God and we will be able to comfort others with the same comfort that we are comforted 
by God.